We're back in Lincoln this week, and uh, judging by the chalky white buckets, it looks like the plaster is on site. So let's go inside and touch base with Molly and see how they're doing. This is a big step in our kitchen renovation project. You always correct me, it's not just a kitchen renovation, it's more of a first floor renovation of this house. At this point, yes. For the last better part of a month, the guys have been killing themselves making this place perfect before the board and plaster show up. We've been pretty meticulous in our framing and now you can see why we're doing that. I think meticulous is the perfect word because I know the guys had spent literally days on the ceiling. We did a post on Instagram about it, we talked about it, and the reason being was really the end result, the design. And it, what it came down to is it was our shop drawing. What is the, the general aesthetic that we're going for in this home? The goal is to have it be very modern, I think the word was transitional that Amy used. It is, it's the, the cabinet I think is definitely a, a transitional look, but very simplistic and, and there's simple design and, and, and almost less is more. Right. Let the cabinetry do its thing. We're also dealing with low ceilings in this home. One concern was that the upper cabinets are gonna be pushed up pretty tight against that ceiling. One detail we worked on is that we were gonna keep it down, have a little shadow gap. The problem with that is in traditional homes, especially if we left the ceiling as it was, you'd have this waviness, right? Right, nothing would be level or plumb. So you'd have this kind of messy shadow line and with natural light pouring in through, you know, the new window and the new patio door, we wanted to make sure we took every opportunity so it really started with the framing. But we're not here to talk about frame. We're here to talk about blue board and plaster, which apparently is only done in Massachusetts. A ton of you guys are gonna ask questions. Blue board is very similar to like a drywall. It just has a different paper on it. Do you know why it has a different paper? I believe it's because the plaster absorbs differently. You're right. The, pa the paper actually has a different chemical in it, so the plaster sticks to it. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bonding agent. It's just designed to have the plaster adhere to it. Do you know how it dries, if it's chemical or air drying? So it is actually chemical. The general process is that first they mix it and apply it as fast as possible. They have about 20 minutes to get it up on the walls and the ceilings. These guys fly. They fly, and they've got a great system. It takes about an hour total to set everything up to get this, this beautiful burnished finish that you're seeing. You're saying an hour total, basically on one spot. They're moving out throughout the room. Right. But you're, hit, you're coming back to that one spot multiple times, right? Exactly. Where, where in drywall, you're gonna basically screed over it You'll do multiple steps, right. but you're not reworking the same mud. You're kind of getting that mud on, letting it dry, and you're sanding for a smooth finish. Right. Are we sanding with this? Not at all. It's all trowel work. On this ceiling, you have this shine, right. and, that, and you, you alluded to it, it's, it's burnishing it. They are burnishing it. So basically what happens is, once they have all of the imperfections out, they take a trowel and just run it the whole length of the surface. One end to the other. And then the second time, they go across in the opposite direction and that makes it perfectly smooth. Why, why are they going in both directions rather than just one? That eliminates that wavy effect that you see in some houses if they chop it or if they apply in just one direction. It doesn't spread chop everything it kind out. Of, meaning like short strokes and kind of working exactly. all over the place. You're basically cross hatching it. Similar exactly. to the way you, you mow your lawn if you have a lawn, right? Right, Okay. right. And another example would be when they're going across the hallway, you see Zambonis do the same thing in skater rinks. I, I love the Zamboni reference. Johnny will, will appreciate that. Going back to our the design here, we, we talked about simplistic. We don't have any trim around this door. Are we, uh, are we going to have trim? No, and that's intentional. So this is a, a, a stop bead, right? Stop bead. That board stops right against our door jam, plastered to it. And what's this detail gonna be here between you know essentially door jam and, pla and, and the wall? They're gonna caulk this part here, and that'll give them that perfect straight line so they can paint it. Realistically, I think we're gonna go with the same color on door and wall, but if we're not, I've been wrong before, <laughs> that caulk line gives them a chance to kind of break a separate color from the door color. Exactly. And we're not and, and not have any casing. Similar to the door, we actually have the windows over here, but this is a little different because our door is inboard, meaning they're swinging into the home. So the door is set pretty, pretty close. It's almost planar with the wall, but the windows are not. No, so the windows over here, we're doing a deeper return plaster detail. And we're not using stop bead, we're using corner bead here instead. So what you see is plaster on the inside, plaster on the outside, and then there's an aluminum or a metal corner bead that allows us to get that perfect tight corner. So we have blue board, blue board, corner bead. This gets plastered and they have a nice straight edge to basically plaster right up against that window. Very similar to where the stop bead is on the door. Right. This will be our transition line. 
Exactly. So no, again, no trim. But what's up with the, the Romex sticking out of the wet plaster here? We actually have sill lights going in here. For those that don't know, sill lights are the small little plastic circles. They have a cap, a cap on them. And I think they got their name from Christmas tree lights. This right. is what I was told. Yeah. I could be wrong. But window sills, you put them in the window sill so you can plug in your little Christmas tree light and they pop out. Right. So why are we putting them here? This is so that we can actually meet code. You have to have outlets within a certain distance with our countertops. This is a countertop? Yes. What's underneath it? Beverage fridges. And what's, what are you standing on? I'm actually standing on protection for our wine cellar. All right, so we have a wine cellar, some beverage fridges, anything else going on we in this We also have area? a keg over here, so this is... Isn't there a coffee and a beer? Oh yeah, but that's on the same keg, so it's... It's gonna have two taps. It'll have a beer tap and a coffee, a nitro Literally coffee Literally a tap, tap for the morning and a tap for the afternoon. Or night, depending. Or night. That's fantastic. <laughs> so this is the corner of the kitchen here. Uh, we actually didn't make reference to it, but we kind of walked through our island. We didn't even mention that these guys start with the ceiling. I think we all know what the reason is, but for those who don't. So we actually do the ceiling first to keep everything off of the walls. You don't want to do all the work on the walls, only to have to go back to pull off any drips that might have fallen from the ceiling. Makes sense. everything clean. So back to the, the chalk lines. I see them snapped in the inside corners. What's going on in here? It's actually a reference point so that they can chowl everything down and keep a nice, true corner. Perfect, so that's, they're just working to a certain line so they always have that reference to go back to and that's visually there. Right. The last area, you had some questions when I walked in. What were you confused about in here? In this bathroom, it's half done. What's the story? In here, Mike and I were discussing that there's no baseboard in this, in this space. It's very clean, a lot of tile. Uh, actually facing on this wall, you see that we don't have any blue board on this wall at all. The rest of the areas we have half. Let's talk about the floor real quick. No baseboard, tile on the floor. We figured we'd take the opportunity to layer the steps so we could install our tile first. Being that it's a curbless shower, we want to waterproof this entire bathroom. Right. So now we have the opportunity to run our waterproofing on the floor and up the wall, okay. install our tile, be finished, protected of course, and then drop down our blue board right above the tile and allowing us to put a stop beat on that. So we have a nice, crisp, intentional corner. Rather than trying to cut our tile tight to plaster or drop down our plaster on top of tile without any intentional edge, the, the stop bead is gonna give us that intentional edge and even give you a slight shadow line. Okay. Slight. A couple of cool things in this bathroom. One, this wall here is gonna be tiled on all sides. What's nice is that the tile dies into plaster comes out, we're gonna have uh, the finick on the, the corners, which is the mitered saluda profile. Tile goes in, tile goes across, tile goes here. Now, I'm not a big fan of this detail over here because that tile is gonna stop and it's gonna need some sort of edging. We don't have casing. No, we don't. That edging is gonna get awfully close to the door. It's gonna look junky. We actually have a plan. What we're planning on doing is doing a second coat along this wall and that'll give us so that the plaster and the tile are flush. So that's gonna be planner. Flush, planner, I'm exactly. using wor different words, you're using different <laughs> words, but it's all the same thing, right? Right. So on that wall, you have this, it's, everything's in plane of each other. Exactly. And we'll, we'll install that second layer after tile. So tile's actually gonna happen. We did the ceiling so we'd have a nice surface to tile up to, Right. but everything else on the wall will be done after. Well, you guys are making great progress over here. Yeah, it's starting to really look like we're in the home stretch. So this stuff will cure for a couple weeks. We'll make sure it's in a good position and then we'll prime this place. And after primer and then tile floors, it's no work time. And that's gonna be really exciting to see that go in. Well, I, I was at the shop earlier and everything's finished, sitting in the shop, ready and waiting for install. I saw that. Stay tuned for another episode. As always, we appreciate you following along. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can follow me at, at NSBuilders for more behind the scenes or even a more behind the scenes would be? At Girl Delighted. Thanks, Molly. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nick.